this dry ground Trusting the promise you're where my hope is found I'm breathing in Oh, thank you, Jesus Shackles. No more shackles, no more shackles. Oh, sing that to the Lord. No more bondage, oh, he wants to hear you sing it to him tonight. Yeah, sing a little louder. No, no more shackles, shackles, no more chains. No more bondage, I am free. the Lord. Let's continue to worship the King of Kings. It says something happens when I call your name. 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 Something happens when I call. Oh yes it does. Hallelujah Jesus. Oh something happens when I call
seated and tell your neighbor you look so good tonight turn to the person but the other person say I am so glad that I get to sit beside you amen hey I have a few announcements that I I just want to make mention of as we move forward who's glad to be at the first sectional rally of 2022 Amen. I believe God is going to do something great. Does anybody believe that God is going to do amazing things tonight? Amen. So after this service, we're going to have a great time. We're going to hear a great word, and we're going to respond to that word. And then afterwards, we're going to have an afterburner at a nearby gym. Last time we were here, we went to the same gym, and the address is 5809 Portsmouth Boulevard. Uh, just a few minutes down the road. Uh, it's $5 for admission, and that will cover both your food and uh, the entertainment at the gym. So make sure that you are there. Make sure that you uh, join us and have fun. I also want to mention that we are about to kick off uh, our fundraising campaign called Move the Mission. Everyone say, Move the Mission. Amen. On April 8th, in just a few weeks, April 8th, We are going to be gathering in Farmville, Virginia, and we are going to be uh, kicking off Move the Mission. What is Move the Mission? It's formerly known as She's for Christ, and it's where we, young people and young adults, get to raise money to see the kingdom of God move forward. A lot of you, uh, you may have dreams of being able to get involved with missions and foreign missions, North American missions, maybe even doing an AYC trip, and some of you... 
that may not even be on the forefront of your mind, but you want to get involved in your local church. But the kingdom of God is bigger than just what we see with our eyes. The kingdom of God is a global kingdom. And when you give to move the mission, it's, it's bigger than you. And, and God can use you. Everyone say, God can use me. Whether it's you raising $100, whether it's you raising $1,000, God can use you and every single penny that you raise this year will count towards God being able to move his kingdom forward. The Bible says that Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. When we give to move the mission, we are seeing God build his church. And so I want to encourage you. No matter how small it may be, whether you have to do car washes, whether you have to do a bake sale, whether you have to go to your teachers, whatever you have to do, doing C31 where you raise a, a dollar increase every single day for a month and you can raise about $1,000 just doing that. It is so easy. It, all it takes is a willing young person to say, you know what, I may not have much, but God, here's what I have to give. And if you do that, we see throughout the Bible, God always multiplies what we give him and you cannot outgive God everyone say I cannot outgive God and with that being said we are going to move into our offering the Bible lets us know that that God doesn't want our money he doesn't need our money but he wants our faith and the Bible says that where your treasure is, that is where your heart is also. And so when we give tonight, it's not because we have to give, it's because we get to give. God doesn't need our money, but he wants our faith. He wants our love. He wants our trust. And when we trust in him, we say, you know what, God, I, I don't have a lot, but I trust that you are my provider. Because the Bible does say that he's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides for every one of our needs. How many of you have can testify that God has provided for you in your life, provided for your family, provided for your church? I wonder if you can stand with me. We're going to pray over the offering for tonight. Amen. If you can bow your heads and pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together in this house. Lord, we thank you for the worship that has gone forth and will continue. Lord, we are anticipating a great and mighty word through the man of God. And Lord, we pray that as we prepare our hearts, we also want to give just a little bit back to you. We, we could never repay you for all that you've done in our lives because you are so good and you are so wonderful to us. But God, as we give in the offering, it's a it's a declaration that we have faith in you and that we trust you. And I pray for every student, every person that gives tonight, that your blessing would rest on them. Lord, your word says that if we give to you, Lord, that you would rebuke the devourer for our sake and that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on us, that we would not have enough room to receive it. And that's what we pray over every faith filled person that we would not give grudgingly or out of necessity but with a cheerful heart and we pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus everyone say in Jesus name amen. and then say amen. amen amen these wonderful ushers will be passing down the offering basket through each aisle and we want you to give whatever the Lord lays on your heart to give let's worship amen Praise the Lord. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Amen. As the ushers make their way by you, why don't you just lift your hands once again to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, it feels so good to give, God, to your kingdom, God. Lord, it feels so good to give back, God, unto you, God, what you have blessed us with, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, let's say hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's sing this song.
something it's gonna come to pass hallelujah that God's been speaking to you oh hallelujah Jesus if he said it I believe it we can take his word to the bank hallelujah what his word says is true oh hallelujah oh hallelujah Jesus we thank you God we thank you Lord oh yeah 
Yes, Kyle, why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you would remain standing, amen. It is my honor, amen, and privilege here tonight to honor our guest speaker. Amen. He is really no stranger to this church. Amen. Many years ago, his church and his, uh, his choir, the Mattoon Choir from Illinois, came through here. Amen. And um, came through here. We had a mighty move of God. It was a tremendous service. Amen. Brother Shine Dowdy has been a minister for over 30 years. Amen. Pastors in Illinois, Mattoon. Amen. And um, praise God. We're just so thankful to have him here. Amen. One fun fact that many may not know, he is a good tambourine player. Praise God. I was just kind of hoping for a moment. Oh, was that his brother? Wow. You don't want to hear him play. Well, I will tell you what. When your brother was here, amen, you guys look a lot alike. I tell you that. Amen. But he is amazing. Amen. In that tambourine playing. If you don't know, there was a video that's going around. Did you guys see that? tambourine ministry amen well, brother dowdy if you would come have your liberty here we uh you have such a great wonderful section one youth that are here ready to worship and get behind you have your way tonight in jesus name amen. well praise the lord everyone <laughs> so good so good to be here we're uh, we're honored be with you today, and I, I have to tell you, you know, yeah, I know, I don't play the tambourine, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of rhythm, and uh, my brother does, he was blessed with all the rhythm of the family, but the poor you have with you always, and I, I want to, uh, I, I want to say right from the beginning, you're absolutely going to love me. You couldn't have asked anybody better to come than me. I can't think of one person that would do better than I'm going to do tonight. I just couldn't, couldn't think of anybody. And uh, I, I thank you, Sister Linville, for the invitation and to be with this great section. Thank you, Brother Evans, for the uh, introduction. And I believe the Lord's going to help us tonight. And uh, I... I, uh, I uh, I believe in young people, and uh, I believe that God is going to help us tonight. Would you preach with me? I, I know it's basketball, you, you, and I know there's fun and volleyball and all that stuff, and, and look, no, no one gets more excited about that kind of stuff than me. I get excited about that kind of thing. In fact, I, I don't know if you know, if you look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm not really built for basketball, am I? But I used to play around. I was, I was out in Stockton, California, and I was shooting some baskets. And up walked a tall Jamaican man, and I asked him, I said, do you play basketball? And he looked at me, and he said, do you play miniature golf? Yeah, I attacked him at the knees. Yeah, that wasn't a, that wasn't a very good day. It wasn't a very good day. So I understand where we're at, but I, I'm not going to preach long. I know you love that. That's what makes you. That's why you're going to love me so much. I don't preach long. But I do want to give the Lord time in the altar for us to seek the face of God, because I believe He's going to do something wonderful. Like I said again, I'm glad to be in Portsmouth. I'm glad to be in Virginia, and uh, we love being here. Thank you. So thankful for my wife, Lisa Dowdy, that has come with me and made the journey. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for her. I'm thankful for her. And uh, uh, thank you for being with me. The book of Genesis. Now, when Lisa was some of your ages, and I was some of your ages, I, I started uh, writing her poems. And yeah, imagine that. And I'm still writing her poems. Now, all you fellows can look at me kind of funny, 
but uh, uh, I see you're sitting by yourself. So you might want to start picking up the pen and making a few notations. Say stuff like, I didn't know angels flew this low. You make the Queen of Sheba look like a hobo. <laughs> Hi. I'm Will, God's Will. I mean, if you guys can't pick this up, I can't help you. You got to walk up to her and say, hey, I put the stud in Bible study. You'll get it in a moment. It'll be all right. I, I promise you'll come along. You'll come along. Walk up to her and say, are you an Egyptian? Because I'd be a slave for you. All right. You're, you're kind of getting it now. There, it's, 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 it's coming. Hey, sometimes we don't like it, but this, this is the place we need to be finding somebody. Not out there, in here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you from Memphis? Because you're the only 10 I see. It's all right. You're coming along. You're getting it. You walk up to her, put your hand on her forehead and say, are you ill? Because it looks like you're missing some vitamin me. It's all right. Fellas, if you're not learning anything, I'm, I'm not going to be able to help you tonight. So. But the Lord is good, isn't he? He's so good. And uh, all right. The book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, I, uh, I love this story. The book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter, and we're going to begin reading at the 22nd verse. This speaking of Jacob. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled with a man. A man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go. For the day breaketh, and he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. I, uh, I want to preach tonight for just, just a few moments on this place that Jacob went to called Jabbok. And I believe the Lord's going to help us. I think it'll make a little more sense as we go. But I think the Lord can help us tonight. You don't really know me. I don't really know you. Uh, but you know what? We know him. And let me tell you something about anointing. Anointing just doesn't come from here, there. But it comes from out there, back here. And anointing is an ebb and a flow 
of the Holy Ghost. And when we hit that place in God, I can promise you we're going to move and we're going to pray some people through and we're going to let the Lord do what he needs to do tonight. Lord, I thank you for these young people. Lord, I thank you for every person that brought them. Lord, if they brought themselves, I thank you for their effort to be here. Lord, we ask you to help us and strengthen us. Be with us. I pray in the name of Jesus, we love you and we give you all the glory, all the honor. Everyone said amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap before we're seated. Hallelujah. God bless you. You can be seated. It was Abraham that came out of Ur the Chaldees. Abraham is, is the father of the nation of Israel. He is the patriarch. And 25 years he waits to have a son, a promised son, not a manufactured son, but a promised son, Isaac. And then it's Isaac that marries Rebecca, and I don't know, she may have been quite ugly, Sister Linville, I don't know, but what I read is when he saw her, he cried. But you know what? It must have kept him humble and praying and seeking the face of God. I always tell my young men, I said, marry somebody ugly. It'll keep you praying. I say the same thing to the young ladies, marry somebody ugly and it'll keep you praying. Isaac marries Rebecca. It isn't long she's pregnant, and there's two children in her womb, and they are wrestling already. And Esau and Jacob are born to Isaac, and Esau comes out first, and then there's Jacob who grabs him by the heel in a sign of struggle and a sign of wanting to be and to become. These two boys grow up. One is a man of the field. The other one's a dweller of tents. Isaac loves Esau, and Rebecca loves Jacob, and there's already division in the home, and Jacob doesn't help it any when Esau comes in from the field after hunting and found nothing. The scripture tells us that he looks at Jacob who's sitting at the tent and stirring the pottage and says, give me something to eat. And Jacob said, I'll give it to you if you give me your birthright. And so Esau trades his birthright for a morsel of meat. That's what the Bible says. But that doesn't stop there with Jacob. Jacob's trickery, Jacob's spirit and attitude and who he is, the liar and the cheat. He fools his father Isaac who is now blind and cannot see. And he knows he's not hairy like Esau and so he gets some skin of animals and puts it on his forearm so that Isaac can run his hand across him and all of a sudden it isn't long until Isaac is pouring out the blessing upon Jacob instead of Esau. Why did you tell us all that? I'm setting up the story. And now we find that Jacob, Jacob is now on the run from Esau, and he runs to his uncle's house, and there, I'm not going to go into all the details, but there he marries Leah, and then he works seven more years, and he marries Rachel, and and then there's great controversy, and it seems that they're always surrounded in turmoil. And each one gives the, uh, Jacob their uh, woman servant, and and now all of a sudden Jacob is 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 now has twelve sons, and God speaks to him and tells him it's time to go back to Canaan. It's time to go back, and so Jacob loads up everything he owns from Laban's house, and he's on his way. And 
servants are out ahead. Esau, he hasn't seen him for years and knows that when he left, that he didn't leave good. The, the Bible tells us that the servants come back and said, Esau's coming, and he's coming with 400 men. Esau's after you, Jacob. You've come to the end of the road. There's nowhere else to go. Esau's almost here, and now you're going to have to deal with all of your past. You have to deal with all of your broken relationships. And this is where we come, that Jacob takes his family and he comes to this brook called Jabbok. Here he is. What does Jabbok mean? If you look at what it means in the Hebrew, it means the emptying place or the pouring out place. All of us, even as young people, we have to come to this place of emptying ourselves out. It's a God first principle. Giving God part time of our life. And I'm gonna tell you what, God is not a part time God. God is not a half full, half empty glass kind of God. God wants all of you. And if you'll seek Him first, empty out everything else. Empty it out. Emptying it out. Emptying it out. I drove, an, I, drove, I drove a nice vehicle, Sister Linville, to the airport in Chicago, O'Hare Airport, as I was climbing on the plane. I've got a nice home that I live in, Mattoon. I've got a wonderful church. I've got a beautiful wife, two beautiful children, and an ugly son-in-law. I got two of the cutest grandkids you've ever seen. I got a third one on the way. That's just how we work in the Dowdy family. I'm so blessed with everything that I have. I have a nice home. I've got a great group of people that love their pastor. I'm thankful for all that, but I'm going to tell you, it's not in the abundance of the things that I have. Because all of us, and I'm telling you, I've done it more than once. I've done it more than twice. Every once in a while, you got to come to J-Buck and say, I've got to empty all this stuff out. i got to remember why I'm in this thing. I've got to know that God was dealing with me, and I've got to pour it all out. Why we hold on to stuff? It's the pouring out. It's the emptying. Jacob said, I've come. He said, I, he said, I, he said, it does it does it doesn't matter that I've got 12 children. It doesn't matter that I've got four wives. It doesn't matter all the stuff I've gotten. I cheated Laban out of all this stuff. I've got a birthright. I've got a blessing. He said, I'm coming to this place. Esau's after me, and I've got to empty myself out. I know if I've got to find a place with God, I've got to empty out all the other stuff. I've got to get rid of all the ideas of extracurricular activities. I've got to, I've, it's not about how fast I run and how high I jump. It doesn't matter how nice I look the grades I get and I want us to be able to do all that but I'm telling you what every once in a while I gotta come out and say God I gotta empty it all out again <laughs> gotta pour it out the scripture said that he came to Jabuk and he was left alone. He was left alone. Now I know this seems, <laughs> this is going to be a concept that gets a little different, difficult for us. But loneliness is not because people are mean. 
Most loneliness in our life is not because I'm not in the right tribe or I'm not in the right group or I'm not in the right peer setting. God is the one that always brings us to a lone place. When you empty yourself out, it all of a sudden becomes you and him. Think of it. Jesus comes walking on the scene. He comes walking and John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He said, I'm not, and then, 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 then we find, he said, I'm, I'm not, uh, he said, he, he came into his own, his own received him not. He said, he said, I'm come, I'm called to the tribe of Israel. And then we find him feeding multitudes, 5,000. And then the next thing we see, we see him with 70. And then the next thing we see, we see him with 12 going into Gethsemane. And then he takes three and he goes a little further. But that's not where the journey stopped. He left the three and went alone in the midst of the garden. Even Jesus had to find that place of alone with him. Listen, if God is starting to strip you of everything in your life as far as relationships go it's for a reason God wants to get you to himself God wants to talk to you God wants to minister to you God wants to get you to your Gethsemane when you say not my will but thy will be done I'm preaching to some young people in Portsmouth, Virginia to the garden and then he's not alone at the garden he goes to the cross all by himself but then as he's buried three days he rises again he shows himself to two and then he shows himself to the twelve and then he shows himself to a group of believers just before Pentecost and then the scripture said these are they which have turned the world upside down don't be afraid to go to the alone place you know what I'm looking for I'm looking for somebody that'll bury their face in this carpet and say I don't care what everyone else thinks I know there's several people here I know someone may be watching me right now, but I've come to my j I've come alone and I'm emptying myself out. Come on, let's all lift our hands. I feel the Holy Ghost starting to work. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm almost done. I'm going to tell you what, our young people are lonely. You can be surrounded by everybody, all these wonderful young ladies sitting here on this pew. And when you lay your head on your pillow at night, some of you, the tears flow down your cheek because you think nobody really cares about me. And I'm going to tell you what, God didn't do that to you to, for you to have a pity party. God did that so you'd say, I need you, Lord. When I got nobody else to talk to and the tears are staining my pillow, I love you, Lord. I don't know why you brought me to the lonely place. I don't know why I'm laying here all by myself and worried about what tomorrow holds, but Lord... Almost done. So we think it's going to be easy. The Bible says there he wrestled. I told you I wasn't built for basketball. But I've built for stuff low to the ground. You want to grab a hold of some of this? See what happens. I don't mind to tell you. I don't mind to stick out my chest. Look, I was thrown in the fire and a brother 13 months older than me and we came out fighting from the very beginning. The Bible says there that he wrestled. He wrestled. 
find out that it's an angel, an angel of the Lord. But it's more than just kind of grabbing and pushing each other around. She got to go a little deeper. It means to grapple, but even further than that, it means the dust from the ground. We call it like this in Mattoon, and I'm surrounded by dust, especially the fields when they plow them in the spring and harvest them in the fall. Everything's dusty. It's in your teeth. It's in your hair. It's in your ears. It's in your toes. It's everywhere. Dust. Dust of the ground. What does it mean? It was more than him wrestling with a man. He was wrestling with his very makeup for God. Made man from the dust of the ground. Get in that wrestling, that alone place. I'm going to tell you what, it's not going to be easy. Look, I'm not here to preach you some happy message. I love to preach and us run around the church and have a victory march and all that kind of stuff, but that's not what the Lord wanted me to do tonight. I'm reaching for somebody right now. I'm telling you what, you got to be willing to get in the dirt. you got to be willing to get in the dust and say, you know what, I don't care what it looks like when I come out of this, but when I come out of this, I'm going to come out winning. When I come out of this, I'm going to come out victorious. When I come out... I'm not going to walk like I've always walked and talk like I've always talked and live how I've always lived. <laughs> he wrestled. Oh, God, I'm getting ready. Come on, play something softly. I told him I wouldn't preach long or keep my word. Wrestled. He wrestled. He wrestled with that old carnal nature. It's an enmity against God. I'm wrestling. The Bible says that the angel was prevailing. Even. Listen to Jacob's tenacity. Even when he touched the hollow of his thigh and his hip was thrown out of joint. Scripture tells us that, and rabbis tell us that, that Jacob never walked the same after that day. I'm telling you, there's that spirit in this church tonight. He wrestled. And even when he touched his hip, even when his thigh went out of joint in his hip, Jacob would not let go. He had not prevailed. The angel had not prevailed until they came to this place. And now listen, you ready? Here's the crux of the message. You're going to get this, and I think you're going to like it. I've always heard it preached, Sister Linville, that the angel had to go. It was the breaking of the day. When I look and see angels, angels came all kinds of time. They came in the night. They came in the morning. They came in the afternoon, the heat of the day. That's how they visited Abraham before he prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah. It wasn't like the angel. I've always heard it preached. The angel had to go. Let me go. You know what? It really wasn't about the angel. The angel was saying this. Jacob, your day is on you. You've ran out of time. And I got to go and let you face your consequence with Esau. Somebody hear what I'm saying right now. It wasn't about the angel leaving it was about, it, Jacob's time was up, and he had to make a choice. Am I going to be a liar and a cheater and a supplanter? Am I going to be neutral about God? Oh, he'd, he'd, he'd praise him one time, and you know, oh, this is the place of God. Ladders up and down, see visions, and the next time, he's cheating somebody, and he's. Listen, God hates neutrality. I said he hates it. 
He looked at those at, the, at Mount Carmel and said, how long hold you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. You know what the scripture says? And the people answered him not a word. Easy question. I would either say, yeah, I'll follow the Lord. Or, no, I want to go ahead and hang out with Baal a little bit. Nobody said nothing, though. You know why? Because they wanted to keep that lukewarm spirit. They wanted to remain neutral. That spirit's creeping into our churches, Sister Linville. That, that neutrality. I'll show up when I feel like it. If I'm on the schedule, I'll come and sing. If the altar call is for me, then I might go pray. But if my brother my sister that I know struggling down there praying, I don't have time for them. So Jacob had come. How many times is your pastor going to preach to you? How many evangelists do they have to bring in? How many youth rallies do we have to have? How many camps and conferences and conventions and NAYCs do we have to get where God's trying to reach for somebody? I'm telling you, the day is breaking. The day is breaking. And this isn't about some angel experience. This is about you making up your mind. I'm going to live for God with my whole heart. I'm going to shift out of neutrality and I'm going to hold on and I'm going to get my blessing. I'm not going to be casual about this. I'm not going to be indifferent about this. This is my night. I can't go one more youth service. I can't go one more rally. I can't go one more summer. Let's all stand. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on. Come on, God's dealing with you. Get ready to sing, get ready to sing. The Holy Ghost is here right now. I don't know what you came expecting, but I'm telling you, God's moving right now. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The Lord sees and the preacher that preached tonight. I wonder who would be honest with the Lord and lift your hand and say, I know I'm not ready to meet the Lord. I know I'm not where I ought to be. Would you lift your hand? There's one, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's working right now. Come on, while every head bowed and every eye still closed, who wants to come to that alone place with God? Would you lift your hand? I'm ready. I'm ready to walk into what he's called me to do. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost working right now. I don't know what your protocol is, but as they begin to sing this, I want you to move in. If you're hungry for something from God, if you're willing to go to your j buck and empty everything out tonight and say, Lord, here I am. Lord. I'm going to come, if I have to come all by myself, I'm going to do it. Come on, who step out? God bless you, sis. God bless you, God bless you. I see him. Come on, what about you? Come on. Come on, you got to respond to the word of the Lord. Come on. Come on, if you don't feel like you need to pray, then pray with some of these. Look at them come. Thank you, look at them come. Thank you, thank you. Come on, God's dealing with you right now, right now, right now. The whole service, God's been dealing with you. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for moving. Thank you. 
Come on, come on, let's move in. If you don't need to pray, at least help us pray with some of these. Come on, he's working, he's working. He's working, he's working. Come on, he's working. Everything I give, God. 